Samira, welcome to CGTN. Thank you so much. Samira, as a Muslim, as a Muslim American, how do you look at the U.S. government's accusation that China is committing genocide against Uyghurs in Xinjiang? Is that a fair accusation? Well, first and foremost, they're arguing that China's uh, de-radicalization programs and uh, vocational programs uh, constitute, quote-unquote, genocide, which I find ridiculous. But besides that, there is just not enough evidence to support the uh, Western claim of genocide. Even U.S. State Department lawyers, they weren't able to substantiate the claim. And um, Muslim-majority countries, actually, uh, not only have they commended China's uh, Xinjiang policy, they've uh, explicitly deemed it propaganda. China has invited a number of diplomats, and um, what they saw and heard in Xinjiang completely contradicted what was reported in the media. And then how do you look at this, you know, forced labor narrative uh, in Xinjiang's cotton industry that has been uh, promoted by mainstream media uh, in the West uh, that was, you know, populated really uh, by many politicians in the U.S.? Well, the uh, forced labor narrative needs to be seen within the uh, broader framework of the U.S. war on China, of which uh, economic warfare plays a very central role. Now, they say that China is an even greater threat to U.S. interests than the USSR was during the Cold War because of China's uh, economic power. So the U.S. Seek, seeks to uh, weaken it economically. Now, Xinjiang is central to this strategy. It's the hub of China's $1.3 trillion Belt and Road Initiative. And at least uh, four Belt and Road projects are dependent on uh, the stability and territorial integrity of Xinjiang. Now, as far as cotton goes, um, Xinjiang uh, accounts for 87 percent of China's cotton and around a quarter of uh, global cotton supply. And it's also fundamental to Belt, uh, Belt and Road in terms of job creation and um, over, uh, overall development of the region. So uh, targeting their cotton supply is uh, two-pronged. Well, it has a two-pronged motive. Uh, in one, weakening China economically and uh, fostering the rise of separatist sentiment. And then, Samira, how much do you think those elites in Washington, those Beltway policymakers, truly care about what they call human rights of those Uyghurs in Xinjiang? How much do they truly care about the well-being of people living there in Xinjiang? Well, as we've seen throughout history, the U.S. has uh, invented claims of human rights abuses uh, to justify intervention and regime change in foreign countries that we later learn to be false. So human rights is more often used as a political weapon uh, than a uh, genuine concern for uh, the well-being of actual human beings. Uh, we saw this in the cases of Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, Bashar al-Assad in Syria. But uh, as far as the people of Xinjiang goes, um, by hitting at its cotton supply, we see that the U.S. is willing to push them into poverty just to advance U.S. interests, um, while also promoting separatism in Xinjiang. Uh, a couple of months ago, the uh, National Endowment for Democracy issued a tweet saying, uh, we've supported um, Uyghur Muslims since 2004, and specifically separatism. And they included a map of, um, of Xinjiang, and it showed it separated from China with the flag of, quote unquote, the so-called East Turkestan. So we see what the U.S. Um, the U.S.'s motives are. You yourself is a Muslim, born, raised in America. Um, how would you compare, you know, the national policies? Uh, you know, towards the Muslims and the Uyghurs, I think minorities in China, versus you know those policies uh, in the U.S. Uh, well, unlike the U.S., uh, China funds the uh, development of Islam, which includes uh, Islamic study, religious learning, uh, Islamic institutions. Uh, there are at least ten Islamic institutes for higher learning in China, and then China also has a poverty alleviation program for Muslims, and specifically for Muslims in Xinjiang. I mean, this is unheard of in the U.S. And I grew up uh, during the quote era of Islamophobia, uh, right after the war on terror. So I uh, experienced firsthand what it was like for Muslims living in the U.S. And it's uh, nothing compared to what China has. I would say that China's anti-terrorism program actually takes into consideration human rights, whereas the U.S. anti-terrorism -ter program involves uh, kidnapping Muslims and then sending them to Guantanamo Bay. Finally, Samira, how would you convince, uh, you know, the Western viewers and the Western audience who are not very familiar, let's say, with your narrative about what's happening in Xinjiang and how the Chinese government has been treating, you know, its ethnic minorities, including the Uyghurs? 
Yet I would tell them to look at history, look at how many times the U.S. has lied about human rights abuses in other countries to justify intervention, like I mentioned before. So this is really just a continuation of U.S. policy. And I would ask them to um, treat their uh, historical amnesia by looking at the history. If you were given a chance to come visit Xinjiang, would you do it? You know, I was going to mention that, yeah, I would absolutely love to check out, uh, check out for myself what's going on and uh, counter U.S. propaganda directly.